I'm Heidi Hisrick, Richmond High School Biomedical Lab Science teacher, and today I'm going to teach you how to analyze your blood spatter data. If you have not already watched the first video, you should watch that. And before you watch this, you should get yourself at least 20 data points um, from a variety of different heights, from about 20 centimeters to at least 150 centimeters. And if you're not able to do that, you can look in the comments and I have a Google Doc of example data that you can use. To begin, you need your data in front of you and you also need your graph paper. There is graph paper that you can use on the PLTW site. You also need a ruler. You can see mine's a little busted, but I'm just going to improvise and I'm going to start at 10. So our ruler measures in centimeters, if you look at the big numbers, and the little lines in between are the millimeters. And because the blood droplets are on the smaller side, we're going to measure them in millimeters rather than centimeters. That's also because on our y-axis, it's asking for the measurements in millimeters. We've already measured each data point in centimeters, and so I'm going to start with my smallest measurements, which were the 20 centimeter ones. So line your ruler up so that you are looking at the diameter of the spatter. And again, I'm starting at 10 because my ruler's messed up, but you're counting how many little lines there are. So it's not a full centimeter, which means it's less than 10 millimeters. It looks to me like it's at about the 8 millimeter mark. So my first data point is 20 centimeters in height and 8 millimeters in diameter. Then you come to your graph paper, you find your 20 millimeters in height, and you find your 8 or I'm sorry, 20 centimeters in height and your 8 millimeters in diameter, and you draw your first data point. I don't want to measure any data point more than once and record it, so I'm just going to put a little X next to it once I've used that data point. And I do have another one that's at 20 centimeters, so I will measure that one next, because just because they fell from the same height does not mean they're going to have exactly the same diameter. This one does appear to have that same diameter of 8 millimeters, however. Since that data point will be in the same place, I don't need to record it because it would just overlap. So now I'm going to move to my 40 centimeter height droplets. And I seem to have two good droplets from 40 centimeters. So let's see what their diameter is. Looks like this one is about nine millimeters. And this one's also about nine millimeters. So that's good, that means we have precision that the same height is ending up with the same diameter. I'll go back to my graph and on the x-axis I find the 40 centimeters and on the y-axis the 9 is going to be between the 8 and the 10 so I will go ahead and plot my dot right there. I'm now going to just go ahead and measure and plot some additional data. So you can now see all of my data points that I've plotted. I had 20 good droplets that I measured, but I have less than 20 dots, and that's because some of them were in the same place, and so they overlapped, and I only drew the dot one time. So when I look at this, what I'm looking for is a trend. I'm not going to draw a zigzag line. I'm going to create what's called a best fit line, and the best fit line is the line that fits best through the data. You want approximately half your data points to be above the line, approximately half to be below the line, as many as possible to be on the line. And I'm going to try this with pencil just to see how it looks. Uh, looks to me like I got too many of the dots above the line, so I'm going to go just a little bit higher. The nice thing is that my data points do seem to fall pretty clearly on a line, so I have a clear trend, which is not always the case in this lab. Sometimes the data points are sort of all over the place. And I feel like that, that was a little better, but I'm going to do it a final time, and this time I'm just going to commit and do it in pen. And that's my trend line. Whoops, got a little error right there. Um, but we could actually continue the trend, even though the highest point that I was able to 
drop from was 200 centimeters, two meters in height, because my hand wouldn't reach any farther, we can still estimate how big it would be if I dropped it from 300 meters in height. So the way you use this best fit line is if you have any given height, so let's say we want to do 300 centimeters in height, we go up to the line and then we go across to the x-axis, I'm sorry, the y-axis, and it would be a bit more than 16 millimeters in diameter if we read directly across. So maybe 16.5 millimeters in diameter if we dropped from 3 meters high. If we wanted to go all the way down to 10 centimeters in height, which I didn't do, again we read up to the line and then we read across and a little bit bigger than 7 millimeters would be the diameter of the droplet. You can do this the opposite way as well. So if you have a droplet from an unknown height, which is going to be the case uh, in the crime scene, then you measure the diameter of that droplet. So let's say this is our unknown droplet. I didn't label it, so we don't know the height from which this droplet fell. I measure its diameter. Looks like it's about 11 millimeters in diameter. I go to my y-axis, I go to 11, which is right between 10 and 12, go directly across to my best fit line, and then read down, and it looks like that fell from about 120 centimeters in height. The biggest thing you have to be careful of is once you've made your best fit line, you ignore each individual data point because the trend of all the data is much more meaningful than one individual data point. So I wouldn't want to say go from 11 uh, millimeters in diameter to this data point and read down to 80. I want to always use this best fit line. Your next step then will be to get the blood spatter from the crime scene, figure out its diameter, and from that determine the height from which the blood spatter fell and defend your conclusion.